everyone, I am Atreja. Welcome to my study room. In the previous video, we completed the second chapter of class 8 science microorganisms, friends and foe. Right? Today, we are going to start with a new chapter that is materials, metals and non-metals, which is the chapter 4 of class 8 science. Okay? What is the name of the chapter? Materials, metals and non-metals. So, first, what is what are materials? Any object, a chair, book, table, pen, etc. Any object is known as material, right? So materials are divided into two, two parts, metals and non-metals. So in this chapter, we are going to learn about what are metals and what are non-metals, okay? Before, start, before learning about metals and non-metals, we need to know what are they made up of, we need to know what are materials made up of, right? So what are they made up of? They are made up of basic units known as elements. What? They are made up of basic units known as element. I am writing it down. Okay? Elements. What are elements? So, element consists of only one kind of atom. For example, I am explaining you with example. Suppose let's take N2. N2 is what? Nitrogen gas. Okay. So N2. N2 is made up of 2N. N2 means N and N. Right? 2N. N and N. 2N consists of N2. N means what? One atom of one atom, one atom of nitrogen, right? N2 is made up of two atoms of N. So think of one thing. It is made up of two similar atoms, right? It is made up of only one kind of atom, N. Both are N. So these are elements. These elements, the molecules that are made up of only one kind of atom. For example, N2. Another example is O2. Oxygen gas. Oxygen gas is also made up of two oxygen atoms. So these these molecules that are made up of only one kind of atom are known as elements and another important property of element is that they cannot be broken down into simple substances by physical and chemical method so this was elements okay materials are made up of elements now let's move to metals and non-metals now this metals and non-metals what are they these metals and non-metals differ in various ways one is physical in physical properties and another one is in chemical properties. Now, physical properties means how do they look um, and then how what shape they are, how hard they are. These are physical properties, okay? And chemical properties means um, how do they react with oxygen and what do they form? How do they react with water? How do they react with acids? How do they react with bases? etc okay these are physical and chemical properties so we are going to learn about every one of them and we are going to understand what are actually metals and non-metals and how do they differ from each other so first today we are going to learn about physical properties in the next video we are going to learn about chemical properties so now let's move to physical properties let's write it down Physical properties of metals and non-metals. First, we are going to discuss about physical state. I am telling you what is the meaning of physical state. Physical state. What is the meaning of physical state? Means in which state, in solid, liquid or gas, is it present in room temperature? Okay. Room temperature means the temperature that is present in a room, means the moderate temperature, okay, not too hot, not too cold, okay. So, this is physical state. Physical state means the state of that matter, the state of that material in which it is present in room temperature. What are the states? Solid, liquid and gas, okay. So, how do, they, how do metals and non-metals differ in physical states? Metals, 
metals mostly stay solid at physical state mostly why i'm telling mostly because there are some metals that are present uh, that are present in liquid state in room temperature examples are mercury and gallium what are the examples again mercury and gallium so very important most of the metals stay solid at room temperature but there are some exceptions there are two metals which do not stay solid at room temperature they stay liquid at room temperature is they are mercury and gallium okay so this was metals and how are non metals non metals stay at solid and gases at room temperature i'm telling it again non metals stay at solid and gases at room temperature examples of solid are carbon sulfur these are the examples which stay at solid in room temperature okay carbon stays solid sulfur also stays solid they are metals they are non metals right so they stay solid in room temperature and examples of gases are oxygen nitrogen these are examples of gases gases are not metals right oxygen and nitrogen are not metals they are non metals and there is one exception again over here that liquid bromine bromine is a metal bromine is a non metal i'm sorry bromine is a non metal that stays liquid at room temperature what were the exceptions in metals mercury and gallium in non metals it is bromine bromine or bromine what do you want to say so this was physical state we understood about physical states of metals and non metals now we are going to move to the next one that is strength So, how do they differ in strength? Most metals are very hard and strong, and there are some ex exceptions too over here. Um, exceptions are sodium and potassium. Sodium and potassium, these metals are not strong. They are not hard, nor they are strong. Okay, but they are metals, so these are exceptions. As most most metals are strong in nature, but sodium and potassium are not strong in nature. Okay, they are very soft. and then about non metals non metals are not very hard nor very strong okay here is also an exception that is diamond diamond is a form of carbon right so diamond is technically a non metal but diamond is the hardest substance known to us okay diamond is a non metal but it is the hardest substance it is even harder than metals it is the hardest substance that is known to us human beings but diamond is a non metal so this is an exception as non metals are not very strong in nature so this was strength now let's move to the next property luster luster means um how much shine there the ability to shine is known as luster so most metals are lustrous okay most metals can be polished and they have luster they are lustrous example gold silver we were ornaments of gold and silver right they have luster they are too shiny so these are metals but these, uh, these are metals and they are shiny so most metals are lustrous means they are shiny and another point is that they reflect light they reflect light if light falls on them they will reflect the light this is a property of lustrous substances okay so luster example gold silver these are metals and most metals are lustrous non metals non metals are not lustrous most non metals are not lustrous non metals are mostly present in gases and powders etc okay they are not lustrous but there is an exception there are exceptions here to diamond diamond is a diamond is a quite lustrous substance right but it is a non metal it is a non metal is a form of carbon carbon is a non metal so diamond is also non metal but diamond is a very lustrous substance so this is an exception graphite graphite is also a non metal but it is lustrous iodine so these three are the exceptions diamond graphite iodine these are lustrous but they are non metals okay so these are exceptions so this was luster now let's move to the next one that is malleability 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 is a property by which materials can be beaten down into thin 
sheets okay a material that can be beaten down into thin sheet thin sheet means thin paper like sheets okay so that is malleability malleability is a property of metals metals are malleable means they can be beaten down into thin sheets for example gold and silver gold and silver have a property that they are malleable okay gold and silver have this property they can be beaten down into thin sheet and non metals non metals are not malleable if you beat them just once they are they are brittle and they are going to break okay so this is this is malleability malleability means the property by which materials can be beaten into thin sheets is known as malleability and non metals do not have malleability they are not malleable they break when non metals are beaten they are brittle and they break okay so this is malleability now the next one is ductility so what is ductility ductility is the property by which metals or materials can be stretched to form thin wires okay malleability was to form thin sheets and ductility is to form thin wires this is also uh, this is also a property of metals metals are ductile means metals can be stretched into thin wires gold silver aluminium they are very ductile you can stretch them into thin wires but non metals no they are not ductile if you try to stretch them they are going to simply break so this is ductility metals are ductile non metals are not ductile then the next one six is sonority okay sonority so what is sonority the ability to produce a ringing sound when struck with any hard material is sonority what is sonority again i'm telling you the ability to produce a ringing sound ringing sound means you know the bells the ringing sound the ability to produce the ringing sound when struck with any hard material is known as sonority and the substances are known as sonorous substances so which are sonorous substances metals are sonorous substances okay means for uh, you see some musical instruments produce ringing sound bells these are all made up of metals okay why because they produce a ringing sound because metals are sonorous metals are sonorous substances but non metals no they are not sonorous if you struck them with a hard material they are not going to produce any ringing sound so this is sonority metals are sonorous non metals are not sonorous next one is conductivity conductivity so what is conductivity i'm telling you um we have learned about good conductors of heat bad conductors of heat good conductors of electricity bad conductors of electricity right so that is conductivity so what are conductors metals metals are really good conductors of heat and electricity okay for example gold and silver they are very very good conductors of electricity they are metals right and we have seen that um the wires the wires are made up of copper mostly the wires are made up of copper copper is a metal and it can conduct heat and electricity so that's why the wires are made up of copper okay copper wires we know so this is conductivity and non metals they are not most non metals are not good conductors of heat and electricity okay there are some exceptions here too what are the exceptions lead and tungsten both are metals but they do not show any conductivity okay so this is an exception because metals show con conductivity but lead and tungsten lead and tungsten despite being a metal do not show any conductivity and there is also an example a, exception in non metals that is graphite graphite is a non metal but it is a very it is a good conductor of heat and electricity okay so this was conductivity now the last point is melting and boiling points melting and boiling points means the points in which they melt and the point in which they boil okay so the temperature in which they melt and the temperature in which they boil are the melting and boiling points respectively so metals have a very high melting and boiling point means they cannot melt or they cannot boil easily okay so 
if there are exceptions too over here. Mercury is a metal but it has low boiling point and sodium potassium are also metals but they have low melting points. So these are some exceptions. Most metals they have high melting and high boiling point but mercury has low boiling point and sodium and potassium have low melting point. Okay. So this was a uh, melting point and boiling point of metal and non-metal. Non-metals have very low melting and boiling points. Okay. They get melted easily and they get boiled easily. There is also an exception over here. Graphite. Graphite is a non-metal, right? But it has high melting and boiling points. So these were the physical properties of metals and non-metals. Physical state in which state they are present, solid, liquid or gas, strength, luster, malleability, ductility, sonority, conductivity and the melting and boiling points of them. So these were the physical properties. In the next video, I'm going to be back with chemical properties of metals and non-metals. And if you like this video, click on like button and to stay with me, please click on subscribe button. Thank you.